Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us. Uh, this is a timely tidbit from the pewterpalace.com. Hi, I'm Louisa, and my husband, Kevin, and I own a 1987 32S Avion travel trailer. We have been publishing um, on our blog, the palace.com and on YouTube since we bought our first Avion back in 19, uh, 19 <laughs> in uh, 2017. It was a 1973 Avion. We currently, we did sell that and we currently own uh, our forever Avion, which is a 1987 32S. And uh, today the topic is how to wash your Avion travel trailer. And um, I decided to do this short program because there are so many people that are join, joining um, the Facebook pages dedicated for Avion owners or Avion wannabe owners. And this question comes up all the time. How do I wash my trailer? What do I use to wash it with? What should I be careful about? And so I thought if I put this into a condensed version that uh, it would be helpful for people, not only who may be watching it when it first comes out, but as an archive um, item on our website that we can refer to all the time and, and help people out. That's what we're all about. The Avion family is a terrific group of people all over the country, in fact, all over the world. And um, as you probably have seen on the Facebook pages, People are just question away. Um, you can post a question or an observation or a new uh, piece of information that you found, and um, it's a it's a very it's a large community, but a very warm and um, personal community. So we're glad you're you're with us today. This will be um, this is one of many um, tutorials or instructional type videos that we'll do. Um, really geared towards the uh, the first timers. Okay, so let's get started. Basic cleaning supplies you're going to need. Um, it is strongly suggested by many, many Avion owners that you use the purple colored simple green. I know that sounds like kind of an oxymoron, but um, it is the Pro HD, the heavy duty purple colored simple green cleaner. You dilute it the same as they recommend on the bottle. You can also use Dawn dishwashing, either the Blue Original or the Ultra. Either one works. Uh, we tend to use the Simple Green on our Avions that we, that we have um, washed successfully. Basic washing equipment. Well, here you go. Um, of course, you're gonna need a hose with a spray head. Ideally, a spray head that has the various uh, nozzles you can turn so that you can go from a light kind of a, sp a sprinkle to uh, more of a garden shower to a harder spray. Um, paper towels, bucket. Um, we like to use those mitts that have the uh, microfiber type of scrubbing on the side of them. Um, you can use sponges though too, just uh, you know the big soft sponges. Step ladder, very handy to have. Scotch brake pad, we'll get into that in a little bit, um, but it is good to have one of those handy. Those are new toothbrushes on my screen. I suggest you not use your new toothbrush. Take some of your old toothbrushes that maybe you've squirreled away. Use those, and they're great for cleaning out the tracks and windows, getting into small spots um, where maybe some grit and grime, or just gently, you know, rubbing off some dried goo or whatever um, on the exterior. Microsoft uh, fiber towels, we find them very important. Where we live, we have very hard water. And um, if we do not towel dry our Avion, the sides, trust me, I don't get up on the roof and towel dry the roof. If I, if I, um, if I don't towel dry the sides, then we get a lot of water spots. So those come in handy and that stack that's viewed there, you'll probably need that amount of them um, because you don't, you really want them, you know, once it gets really soaked, you wanna switch to a dry one. And of course, a ladder. We do suggest freestanding ladders. Um, it's not advisable to lean any ladders against Avions or Airstreams for that matter. 
Um, but if you have to, we'll go over we'll go over some tips on that in a little while. Um, we're very fortunate, and we have some scaffolding, some rolling scaffolding platform that we use in addition to our step ladder and our ladders. And I'll show you a picture of that a little bit later on in the in the uh, slideshow. Extra items for tough spots. Um, Bojo scrubbing towels are something that we use. Kevin uses those at work. Uh, in his shop and we have found them to be a great way to do some quick wipe downs if we need to uh, in between baths and they also are great for taking off again the bug glue that you know dries on the front of your trailer. Um, I would just say don't leave that um, scrubbing chemical on there. I always fi follow it right up with a microfiber towel um, as soon as I wipe an area down. But we have literally given our Avions, both of them, total, what I would call a dry bath, just using the scrubbing towels. And um, we've been doing that for, on both Avions now, it would be close to six years with never an issue. Again, I always follow it up with wiping it immediately down with a fiber, uh, microfiber towel. But they, they do work well and uh, none of the information on the towels gives me any indication that they would be adverse to using on aluminum so we do use those. Um, some people have used Bonami very successfully that would only really be on areas that are really stubborn and not coming um, not coming nice and clean for you. Um, we all have some certain amount of oxidation or most of us do on our trailers. People have used the Bonami. I would caution you to use it very sparingly, and very gently, uh, even though it says it, it does not scratch and it shouldn't, um, but use any of that as well as the Scotch-Brite pads, use them very, very gently and carefully because you do not want to rub off the anodization that is, um, that is on, your, on your trailer, okay? Tips for best results, okay. A number one tip, wash your trailer on overcast or cloudy days or move it into the shade, full shade, and wash it in the full shade. Do not wash your Avion when the sun is shining on it. That aluminum heats up really quick and what will happen is your soap will dry so fast and it becomes very difficult to get off. So wash it on cloudy overcast days or definitely under cover or in the shade. Have all your cleaning supplies and equipment at hand before you even get started because you do need to work pretty quickly when you are washing your Avion. As always, recruit a helper if it's possible. And we suggest remove all the bugs and, and any marks. Um, you know, when you're traveling and, and towing your trailer, you're going to pick up, invariably, you're going to pick up stuff along the road. Um, and it's best to get that off first before you start cleaning. So again, we use those Gojo wipes and, uh, and do some other spot cleaning around the rig first before we start with the bucket and the sponge and the sponges and and the uh, HD purple cleaner. And also we strongly suggest you wash in layers and then break that down by section, and rinse, 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 multiple, multiple times. Here's what I mean by the layers. We start with the roof and obviously water runs down. So there's no sense in starting the side and then going back up to the roof because you're just gonna have all that soap and all that streaking coming back down again. So start with your roof. We work front to back, usually at least once a year, if not twice a year. When Kevin is up on the roof, yes, that Kevin's up on the roof. When he is up there, we take off the, um, Max Air type uh, plastic covers that we have covering our fans, our vent fans, and our air conditioner cover. We take those off, he hands them down to me, I wash them while he's still up there. Um, we put them back on and finish the whole washing of the top. Good practice to do because they, those babies do get pretty, pretty dirty, especially if you're 
if you're camping in areas with high wind, um, a lot of sand or, you know, desert uh, situations, you're going to get a lot of buildup of, of dust and dirt. You Texas folks know exactly what I mean by this. Um, and then we go to what's called what we call the upper body or above that midline, that mid line, the rub rail, as it's referred to. So again, we start in the front, we move to the back of one side, then do the back, then move to the other side, coming around back up to the nose. And what I mean by doing in sections is we only do about a five to six foot section at a time. And if you look at my little drawing here, you can kind of see how even like the zippy awning rails kind of break the rig into and the windows and doors kind of break it into sections and that's pretty much the sections that we do. So we do that above the roof and the above the body. Now keep in mind your water's all rolling down and when you're rinsing you're rinsing the entire side because again you don't want that soap to you were you know when you were doing the roof you don't want it to dry on the side of the rig. So you're constantly rinsing off as you're progressing along. Yes, you're gonna use a lot of water. Third is our lower body. In other words, below the rub rail. We do that again in sections, but at least now your water is basically just going down onto your basement area and onto the ground. And then finally, we finish up with the basement storage areas, all those little compartments. Um, if they're empty, by all means, you know, put them up and spray out inside there, get those nice and clean again, because again, they will pick up, they're not airtight or watertight, as you probably have figured out. And so it's good to get those um, cleaned out once in a while. And then bumpers, the tongue, and finishing up finally with your tires. I'm not gonna go into detail on finishing out your tires. Um, we'll just touch on that a little bit later windows and steps. After you've washed and wiped down the aluminum skin with those microfiber cloths, then we break out the glass cleaner and the paper towels and we go over and we clean our windows. We clean the lenses on the rear lights. We pull out the steps and give them a good final wipe down. Chances are we've scrubbed them a bit when we were doing the, uh, the lower um, sections of the trailer anyway. And then tires, Whatever products you're used to using on your on your car, um, certainly you know scrub up those those rims, get those nice and shiny again. Um, that's where the the uh, Bonami and the um, green scrubbies, as we call them, will come into play as well. And then put a protectant on the tires. And um, there's a lot of aftermarket things for that. Uh, Armor All makes products and things. It's really good to do that um, routinely. And then for sure, when you're going to be storing, if, you're, if you need to store your trailer for any length of time, put that protectant on the tires. And um, if you're storing your Avion outside, cover the tires, even if it's just a sheet of plywood, um, cover over so that they're not open to the sunlight uh, where they're going to deteriorate much faster. Vinyl parts on our 80s and 90s models of trailers, they will have this type of aluminum cover and um, there's a vinyl, hard plastic vinyl cover that snaps down on the top. Um, we use an Armor All product on that to keep that looking fresh. And uh, that can also um, carefully be used on the um, on the belt line, there are some other chemicals and we can go into that on a Facebook chat at another time. There are some other protective type of um, solutions that people have recommended that you, um, you kind of oil up or uh, you know lotion up that, that vinyl belt line. That will help to keep its color brighter. It will also help the integrity of the vinyl. These, tend to shrink a lot. That's why you might see, especially by your doors, where the edges of that vinyl belt line finish off, they've shrunk over time. That's the typical thing that happens. So the more you can keep it kind of soft and lubricated with some type of treatment, the better. And then the final rail is the very lower one. 
is slightly smaller than the two midline rub rails. But again, always good to give that a little spa treatment and give it a little moisturizing with uh, some protectant and lubrication type of solutions. Final point, power washing. This is kind of almost as big a topic as what kind of tires to use are the best to use. There are a lot of pros and cons. A lot of people will advocate for power washing. I am not going to go into the acid washing. That is a whole nother topic that I don't know enough about to give you any type of advice on. We do not do it. We do not do power washing. We do by hand, old fashioned by hand washing. Um, if you are going to use a power washer, it on a very low setting and be sure that when you are washing around the seams that you only go on the top part of the seam. You do not shoot that power washer in any way, shape or form towards the open seam. So you have to be careful which direction you're holding your power wash wand and have it going so that the water is going over top of the seam, and not into the seam. Um, there is a lot of important sealants that are there even back from the factory and whatever other previous owners or yourself have put in from the standpoint of Parbond or Tempro or um, other types of sealants that are so important uh, to keep in there. So if you're going to power wash, please be very careful. Final points to, to, uh, to go on. Again, just kind of reiterating, wash in sections, treat it like a layer cake, start with the roof, then go to the body above the belt line, then go below the belt line, and then finally finish up your basement area, your tongue, your bumpers. Don't allow any soap to dry on the aluminum skin. So when you're, when you're washing, try to keep that, that runoff only coming on the side that you are actively washing on too, so that it doesn't dry. Again, washing in the shade under, under a cover or on a cloudy overcast day will help that not dry so fast. Don't dry when the temperatures are too high, too hot. Because again, as we know, these aluminum, even if they're not in the direct sun, they do heat up a lot more than a modern painted white type of trailer. Rinse, 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 and rinse again on each section. Even if you're washing the roof, rinse that entire side of that, of that area of the Avion sidewall so that you're getting all the soap off. And I mentioned when washing the roof, consider at least once or twice a year removing the fan vent covers and, and the AC cover. Wash them, dry them, put them back on before moving on to the other body layers. Carefully check all the cleaning products that you are going to use. Make sure they're safe for aluminum. There is a lot of product out there that will adversely react with aluminum. So be careful um, what you're choosing. If in doubt, ask on one of the Avion Facebook pages or on the Avion forum um, for advice. Don't rub hard with any abrasives and apply side to side, not in a circular motion or rubbing up and down, because marring may happen. As a little story, um, we also use AlumaGuard. I didn't list that here, because it's kind of an after, it's an afterthought thing. That, this is about washing. And in order to use the AlumaGuard product, which is a spray-on product, it does help reduce and, and um, kind of mitigate the, the oxidation that will show on the sides. You gotta remember, these rigs are, you know, decades old and they're gonna have a certain amount of that anyway. Um, I did not think about putting it on side to side and I did it in a karate kid, wax on, wax off mode, circular. And after a while um, of, of wear and, you know, road dust and stuff picking up on it and rainstorms we were in, the aluminum guard will last several weeks if you're out, you know, full time in it. Um, and at least three or four rainstorms, at least that's been my experience. But after those rainstorms, I could see some of that circular motion. So go side to side, uh, not up and down, not circular. This is a cautionary tale here. 
Um, we, we are fortunate we do have scaffolding. You can see that in the lower picture, the yellow scaffolding that we can adjust the height of. And Kevin can even put a small step stool up there if he needs to be able to get onto the roof uh, a little bit easier. You can see that on the top picture. If you don't have scaffolding and you need to rest ladder, you don't have a freestanding ladder, and you need to rest a ladder against your avion, try to rest it where there are the metal rails for your awning. Put padding around it and lean up against the awning rail. Um, that is going to be your most secure area. Never ever stand on, crawl on, lean on, or lean your ladder on the rounded ends of the Avion trailers. That goes for any year of trailer. The bread loaf style like we have, which is the 1973 and newer, or the 1972 and older where you get into the fan fronts and backs. These are not supported like the rest of the rig and they don't have the type of framing that can handle the weight of anything leaning on them. Um, also, um, if you are going to get up on the roof for any reason, for any project, you don't have scaffolding where you can get up high enough and then kind of like really lean over. And you, you are gonna need to get up and kneel. You can see on the top picture here that Kevin has a half inch plywood board. It's probably, well, he uses several of them. This one is probably about two feet wide by three feet long. And he uses that, he puts that on first and then he climbs up onto that. So the weight is distributed when you're on the roof. Um, you want to try to put those boards where you can see the rivet lines. That is your structural support. So always try to have your, your board um, on that. That goes the same for leaning your ladder up as well. But uh, when you're using the board, put the board over at least one, preferably, straddling over top of two seams so that it gets the most support for for you okay all right well i hope this this little uh, presentation has helped you in some way and we appreciate you watching we hope you'll uh, find us on youtube it's pretty easy youtube.com forward slash the pewter palace and if you just go to youtube and just type in the pewter palace we'll come up um, we do have playlists saved under certain topics to make it a little bit easier for you to find things. And um, please visit our blog. Um, again, like I said, we've been maintaining that since uh, 2016, end of 16, 2017. And there's a lot of articles in there, very easy to search. There's a search bar. You can put in a keyword there and just search, you know, search wash and our, our washing video will, will come up we did with our 1973 um, Avion. So again, thanks for joining us. Look forward to some future um, tidbits, um, timely tidbits, and we're happy to bring you other, other um, instructional videos. Take care, enjoy your Avion. Always be sure to reach out if you have a question and we appreciate your feedback. Thanks so much, bye-bye.